It's Lab Muffin here, your resident beauty science nerd, and today we're going to be talking about visible light. More specifically, we're going to be talking about blue light and what that does to your skin. We all know about UV rays from the sun damaging your skin, and you might have also heard of infrared radiation. But what about the wavelengths of light that we can actually see? Will they damage your skin? How can you protect your skin from visible light? Let's take a closer look. The sun produces a lot of light. As well as the wavelengths of light that we can see, which is called visible light, there's also ultraviolet or UV light, which has shorter wavelengths and higher energy. UV is one of the main causes of aging skin. On the other side, at longer wavelengths than visible light, there's low energy infrared or IR radiation. The energy from the sun that we get on Earth is about 3 to 7% UV, 44% visible light, and 53% infrared. Even though there's less UV in total, UV ends up causing more damage because each individual UV particle, or photon, has more energy. It's like being hit with a single bullet, or being hit with a bunch of balled up tissues that weigh the same as 10 bullets. But there's been more research that's been finding that visible and infrared wavelengths can also cause skin damage. So why is blue light the colour that everyone's interested in, and not the other colours like red or yellow? Most of the time when people say blue light, what they really mean is blue and violet light. And the reason why these colours are more damaging is because of physics. Shorter wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation from the sun have more energy. In sunlight, UV has the shortest wavelengths, which is up to 400 nanometers. Visible light is longer, from 400 to 700 nanometers, so it's lower in energy. Infrared has longer wavelengths, from 700 nanometers to 1 millimeter, and out of these three, it has the lowest energy. If we zoom into the visible light region, the order of the colors is Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Infrared is past the red end, while ultraviolet is past the violet end. Blue and violet have the shortest wavelengths of the visible region, around 400 to 500 nanometers, and therefore out of all of these colors, it's got the highest energy. So these colors of light are the ones that are the most likely to cause damage that's similar to the UV sun damage that we've been researching for years and years. Because of their higher energy, blue and violet light is often called HEV light, which stands for high energy visible light. The research on the impact of blue and visible light on your skin isn't as advanced as the research on UV, so it's a bit less clear exactly how it causes damage to your skin. And to make it more confusing, older studies on the effects of blue light aren't as valid. Because the electromagnetic spectrum is a continuous spectrum, there isn't any sort of strict divide between ultraviolet and visible light, except for what human eyes can and can't see. A lot of the time, the lights used in the older studies actually produced UV as well as blue and violet light. This means that the effects that they found could have been from the stray UV light, and not actually because of the visible blue and violet light at all. Here's what the research shows so far about light and skin. Just like how UVA and UVB have different effects on the skin, Different parts of the visible light spectrum can also have different effects depending on their wavelength, which translates to colour or energy. Different colours in the visible light spectrum can even have opposite effects on your skin. Here's what the studies have found. In cultured human skin cells in in vitro studies, blue light caused skin cells to die, while red light had no effect. In animal studies, blue light slowed down skin recovery after it was irritated, while red light sped it up, and green and white light didn't make a difference. In people with dark skin, blue light increased pigment and caused dark spots on the skin, while red light didn't. So far, it seems that blue and violet light are the colors of visible light that cause the most damage to skin. And it seems like they cause this damage by producing nitric oxide free radicals. These free radicals are really reactive because they have an unpaired electron, which means that they can attack other substances in your skin, like DNA and protein. 
I've talked about free radicals before in my video on antioxidants that I've linked in the caption below. There's a lot of different types of damage that free radicals can cause. They can slow down skin cell production and they can break down collagen, for example. So with all this free radical damage, you end up with damaged skin that looks more uneven in tone or texture. Even though both visible light and UV light both cause skin damage, it's important to note that they have different effects on your skin. So you can't compare the two types of light directly. For example, visible light doesn't directly damage DNA, but UV does. Visible light also doesn't cause the same microscopic changes in your skin that UV does. UV, for example, increases inflammatory interleukin-8 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, and P53, which is a tumor protein that suppresses cancer. Both UV and visible light cause pigmentation or skin darkening in people with darker skin. But the pigment caused by visible light lasts longer than the pigment caused by the longer wavelengths of UV called UVA1. The exact color of the pigment is also different. UVA1 causes your skin to get a grayish pigment that slowly turns brown after a while, but visible light causes pigment that's brown straight away. You also need different amounts or doses of UV and visible light to have a noticeable effect on skin. Each particle or photon of UV has more energy than each photon of visible light. So again, it's like a bullet versus a balled up tissue, but the total energy to have an effect on your skin is also different. So with the tissue analogy, not only do you need enough balls of tissue to get the same weight as a bullet, you actually need a whole lot more. Different studies have found that you need between 8 and 30 times as much visible light as UV in terms of the units for light energy, which is joules per square centimetre. The effects of visible light also depends on the type of skin you have in terms of skin tone. In one study, none of the tested amounts of visible light cause pigmentation in people with light Fitzpatrick II skin but people with darker Fitzpatrick 4 to 6 skin developed more pigment. The smallest amount of visible light that caused pigmentation in all of the dark-skinned people in one study was 40 joules per square centimetre. This translates to about 30 minutes of sunlight in midday in summer in Texas. One theory for why visible light has different effects on dark skin and light skin is that visible light might interact with melanin to form damaging free radicals, the ones that I talked about earlier. So if you want to protect your skin from visible light, what can you do? You might have guessed with mineral sunscreens that contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, but that's not quite right. Even though a lot of people call these ingredients physical blockers, they don't actually work that way. They mostly work just like organic or so-called chemical sunscreens that absorb some wavelengths. So even in studies where they used a really thick layer of mineral sunscreen, they still didn't protect against visible light. But there are some ingredients that can help. Iron oxide, which is used as the main pigment in foundations, is effective at protecting your skin against visible light. But there isn't a standard for measuring how well any sort of product protects against visible light. So there isn't a well-used measure for how well something protects against visible light, like how we have SPF for UVB and PPD for UVA. Since visible light causes damage via free radicals, antioxidants can also soak them up, which I've talked about before in another video, the one that I've linked in the description. One study found that the free radicals from visible light were halved when an antioxidant mixture with vitamin E and feverfew and soy was used on people's skin. And just like with UV, avoiding exposure to light can work better than just using skincare products. You can stay in the shade, you can wear hats and clothes as well to protect your skin from visible light damage. And that's all for today's video. I hope you liked it and you learned something new. Next time I'll be talking about whether or not you should be worried about skin damage from blue light from screens like your laptop, phone, tablet or computer. Stay tuned to find out more. As always, subscribe, follow, yay science! See you next time for more nerding.